Let's take a look at that uh, new trade deal that the government has announced with New Zealand this week. Uh, it did leave some critics uh, underwhelmed. Trade with New Zealand only accounts for 0.2% of uh, gross domestic product. That's the sum total of everything we make in the country. And the new agreement is only expected to have a negligible effect on the economy. But could this deal prove to be a backdoor to larger markets in countries like Canada, Mexico and Japan and ultimately lead to that free trade deal with the USA. Well, Morgan Todelmeider is Head of External Affairs at the world-leading think tank, the Adam Smith Institute. Morgan, thank you so much for joining us. In a nutshell, sum up the deal for us. Who is it working better for, New Zealand or us? So it's probably working a little bit marginally better for New Zealand, so we'll be honest, because um, the UK has a lot more to offer New Zealand. They're a much smaller country. Um, and if you look back in history, when we joined the EEC, we left New Zealand um, and kind of took out almost 50% of their trade. So they relied really heavily on the UK before we joined uh, what would become the EU. So now we're kind of going back and saying we would really like to start this relationship again. Um, let's look at what we can do. So what we see is an immediate removal of tariffs on um, goods for New Zealand. So immediate removal of tariffs on wine, honey, uh, all those things. Lamb, the tariffs on lamb will be removed over 15 years, so we can import tariff-free lamb in 15 years. Mm. Um, but everything going to um, New Zealand will be tariff-free, so that's great. There's also some mutual recognition of qualifications, so UK lawyers and architects can move to New Zealand and set up shop there if they want. Um, businesses can set up a New Zealand office to have that base um, in that part of the world. Um, so both those things kind of allow for a bit more movement of goods and some movement of people, which is very good. But I Excuse me, as you say, this is kind of a precursor to us joining um, CPTPP, which is the regional trade body which includes Australasia, Japan, Canada, all, basically all the big guns, um, millions of millions of people and uh, billions of dollars in trade. Yeah, yeah. According to the Department for International Trade's own internal assessment, the deal at most would boost the UK economy by 0.01%, and in another scenario, it would actually make the UK poorer by 0.01%. So is the big gain then from this potentially getting into that partnership? That's what we're talking about when we talk about the significance of this deal. Yeah, absolutely, because New Zealand is a member um, of that partnership, so they will be able to make representations on our behalf, hopefully, following this deal, saying, look, we've already have an agreement in principle with the UK. We are willing to trade with them. We agree that they're... Um, standards are similar to ours and basically it's like having a friend in the group saying yeah. this is a really great country we should trade with them yeah and not great not great for farmers not for farmers in this country when they see cheaper land coming in yeah I think you'd be hard find hard pressed to find a trade deal that the NFU would agree with yeah um, they said the same thing about Australia but like I said these tariffs are coming over off over 15 years if the uh, NFU and the, and the farmers can't adjust in a 15-year period to slightly cheaper lamb, I'm mm. um, not sure what uh, they expect the rest of the country to do. Um, are we going to sacrifice um, good quality produce because they can't adjust over a 15-year period? Yeah. It's a significant deal, but it's nowhere near as significant as other trade deals that haven't yet been properly firmed up. Mm -hmm. What are the UK's big sort of looming priorities and, and partners that we need to have these agreements with. Yeah, so as we mentioned, the CPTPP is the big one, um, which includes, again, Australasia, Asia, um, North America. So that one's something we really need to get uh, into. And uh, the deal with the, the US is going to be a big one as well, which um, unfortunately seems we've been taking a few steps back um, when Joe Biden came into the administration because it seems that he is um, less concerned with getting a deal. Um, but hopefully that becomes a top priority that the, um, the UK can get a deal with the US and really um, capitalise on that massive market. Yeah, how long does it take to do, I mean, to do a trade deal? I, I, last time I looked, it was on average seven years to do a trade deal like that. Is that about right? Yeah, so it will take many years. All of these agreements that we've seen are agreements in principle. Um, so basically it's the framework for a deal that will be uh, hashed out. Um, so it will take many years, um, certainly with a country as big as the US, um, we will again see those agricultural issues coming back up. We'll see issues with movement of people. So there will be a lot of touch points that we'll have to work through. Yeah, it's interesting. Thank you, Morgan. Really, really good to see you this morning. Thank you. Uh, Morgan uh, Shundelmeyer there from the uh, Adam Smith Institute.